Gather around, my friends, and I will weave you a tale of woe and redemption. So, it's 4.59 on a Friday night, and you are about to hit the clock and run away for the weekend and drink some cold beers and make some YouTube videos. And your boss pulls you aside and says, Oh my God, we just got a phone call in East 20 miles past Nowheresville, and their stuff's overheating and not working, and nobody knows what's going on, and we need someone to go fix it tonight because they got a big run and they needed to get it done, and... They pull you aside and say, get on it. And you say, okay. So you get there. And you start pulling stuff apart. And you find that all the fans in the thing sound like this. And barely turn. Because Slappy the janitor forgot to realize they need to vacuum the filters out more than once every decade. The only problem is you don't have a fan that fits. Maybe it's the wrong size. Maybe you only have two 20-volt fans instead of one 20-volt fans. Maybe it's a brand that's 20 years old and you never heard of it. You don't know what the specs are. But you do know that you got to get something done tonight. And here's your little get-out-of-jail-free card. And this will get you a day, maybe two. This is not a long-term fix by any means. It's just a way to get some stuff done when you're completely screwed a long way from home and a long way from the FedEx guy with some new parts. So what you want to do is on most of these fans, you got a label. And underneath this label, if you press down, you can see a little depression. And what's under there, you take your stabby pokey knife, and you cut the label off, and you'll find a little bearing cover. So what you want to do, after this guy focuses in again, let's, uh, let's put this on an angle so you guys can see a little better is you take your stabby pokey knife and you try and pry that little bearing cover out. And usually what you find under there, we can make this focus. Come on. You see that? I don't know if we can see that. Let's put some light on the subject. So, if we look down there, we can see some bearing -y kind of stuff and maybe snap ring and some other stuff. And usually what we'd see is a little bit of oil, or a little bit of grease, and that looks dry as a bone. Now at this point, you got to make the call whether you take it apart completely, or whether you just try and put some oil in there and make it work. Um, we're going to go all the way, because I want to show you how it's done. So there is a little teeny tiny circlip in there, and I do not have a set of pliers for it, but I do have some small screwdrivers. And if I'm really lucky, come on, come on, we're going to get this little teeny tiny bejesus clip off. And once we do that, we should be able to pull the fan apart just like that. And we can look. We can see we got bearings. we got a bronze bushing on this one. And uh, in this case, we got a whole bunch of hair and crap that's uh, wound around in there. It's, uh, jamming up the works. So once we pull all that out of there, we'll put it back together and see what we get. Um, what we should do at this point is add some oil to this. Or grease. Or something. Now, we're not real particular about our lubrication at this point. It needs to be probably petroleum-based and greasy. It can be three-in-one oil. It can be motor oil. It can be transmission fluid. It can be axle grease. It's just got to be something that's greasy that'll last for a day or two until the parts come in. So, uh, what do we want to use? You know what? How about this? Air tool oil. Perfect. Comes in a little squeezy bottle. We'll put a tiny bit on there. Just something. We're not looking for perfect. We're not looking for NASA. This is not space grade. This is something to get us home on a Friday night and let the guy tomorrow with the FedEx parts that you just emergency overnight get there. So uh, put a little oil on there. We'll put this back together. Oh, listen to that. Nothing. Love it. Now comes the hardest part of the whole operation, which is finding that little teeny tiny circlip, which luckily has stayed on the end of the screwdriver. Come on, focus, you bastard. 
All right, so now we'll try and get that back onto the shaft without uh, loosening it or having it fly across the shop because you ain't ever going to find another one of these, especially not in an emergency. So we do the fidgety thing and try and hook that on there and push it all the way down until we think it's clicked on there. And what we've forgotten to do here is we've lost a piece out of this. you got to be careful about all the spring of things and sprung of things coming out when you do this. There is our C-clip. What we lost was this O-ring. Where do we think this O-ring lives? I'm thinking it lives up on the top. second screwdriver to push this down. Push that back down on and we've got a Teflon washer. It came out. Should set the end play. Fan. Try to pick up this little spring. This little uh Circle it and wedge it back into place. I realize I'm doing this completely off camera. My apologies. Now, let's get let's get another stabby pokey thing. That is back on. Put another tiny little drop of oil down into the vex. And now, most important part, we got a little plastic bearing cap. We'll uh, snap that back into place. Our super high strength bearing seal tape, also known as vinyl electrical tape, because this is a run much brung project. And that's it. She spins. Do I think she'll work? <laughs> it's as easy as that. Now this is not a long-term repair in any way, shape, or form. This is a get-out-of-jail-free card. But you know what? If it's Friday night and you're 100 miles from home, it's the best damn jail-free Get out of jail free card I know how to use.